Zane Man here again, and today I thought I'd give you a walk around and kind of a long-term ownership review of my 2010 Jeep Patriot. Now we've had this thing since new, and uh, it's been 11 years now, and I just thought I'd go around and talk about uh, how well it's held up over the years, and how it came equipped, and some of the things we like and don't like about this, and uh, whether we would ever own one again. Okay, so this is a 2010 Jeep Patriot, the North Edition, which I believe is probably similar to the Limited. Um, the North Edition is probably a Canadian version of this vehicle, hence the North Edition name. Um, this model of Jeep ran from 2007 to 2017. They came in 4x2 and 4x4 models. Ours is the 4x4 model. And we purchased it new in about June of 2010 and paid about uh, 25 or 26,000 Canadian dollars for it. You could get it in a 2 liter or 2.4 liter engine. This one has a 2.4 liter, which gives you about 170 horsepower. It's a fairly big vehicle for that size of engine. The fuel mileage we've been getting pretty consistently, 10 liters to 100 kilometers, which works out to about, uh, I'd say 23 miles per gallon. Um, it also, this one, uh, you could have got a five speed, but this one has the CVT automatic, which is a uh, continuously variable transmission where it has a wider range of gears, if you will, compared to a a, a usual automatic transmission. As far as uh, safety features, it's got uh, anti-lock brakes on all, uh, uh, anti-lock disc brakes on all four corners. On the inside, it's got uh, front and side airbags, which was, I think, a unique uh, feature in these vehicles in 2010. Uh, came with the usual uh, stability and traction control. With it being 4x4, four four, it would distribute between the power between the two front wheels and the back, all, both back wheels as well, because there is a, a drive shaft and differential on the back end of this to make up that 4x4. Four four. It's not an all wheel drive model, it's definitely 4x4, four four, and 4x4 four four you have to turn it on when you want to use it. You know, again, it was well optioned for this trim level. We got options like power windows, it has a sunroof in it. Um, air conditioning, cruise control, satellite radio with a CD player, and an auxiliary jack. And it does have the Bluetooth as part of it. Uh, when we go on the interior, you look at that stereo and think it's pretty archaic, but uh, you know, for its time, it was kind of state of the art uh, 10 years ago. Why don't we go around the exterior of it, and then we'll go into the interior and look at the motor, and then maybe take it for a little drive. Here's a view from it from up above. You can see the roof rack and the sunroof on there and the little satellite radio antenna at the back. I don't think I mentioned it did come with satellite as well. So yeah, it's got the standard Jeep grill on it. So overall, the body is held up very well. I mean, if you look at the wheels, they've got that normal oxidation or corrosion on them that uh, is always an issue in northern climates where they're putting stuff on the roads to melt the ice. Um, it's got some the usual dents and dings from parking lots um, with careless people. Um, it's hard to see in the camera but they are there. I mean it is a daily driver. It's not perfect in any sense of the imagination. But I mean the paint is really held up well. Now I mean it was garage kept from 2010 to 2019 so it was always inside so that probably helped the uh, finish stay as shiny as it is like there's no sign of, of fading or anything like that um, no rust holes per se coming through um, let's see it did Is it down here yeah right here we're starting to see some down here we're starting to see some surface rust. One one thing that all vehicles seem to be using now is the uh, as part of their design is the door now is part of the wheel well which I don't know uh, you end up getting things like this where it starts to rust as far as I'm concerned but after 11 years I guess you really can't complain about that. Let's 
go around to the back hatch here. It's got a nice wide opening hatch so that uh, uh, you can get stuff in and out of it. We did have it uh, perma-shined uh, back in the day when uh, we bought it, so maybe that helped the finish keep some of it shine. It certainly, you know, I haven't waxed it or done any kind of coating on it since it was new, so there are some, uh, you can see brush marks and swirl marks in the paint if uh, it was out in the sunlight, but uh, other than that, it still looks good, at, you know, if you give it the 10 foot rule, it looks really good. Is the only real body damage we have. That was just a little mishap in a parkade with a low hanging ductwork. But other than that, I would have to say it's been it's been a good survivor over 11 years from a, a body perspective, and really can't fault the uh, the construction of the the overall body panels. Even the plastic bumpers and stuff have stained, you know, they're nice and tight, they're not rattly. As you can see from the interior, the seats have held up well over the years. Um, not a lot of uh, passenger activity um, in the back seat, for sure, it's almost brand new. The front uh, was mostly my wife driving, so she was in it alone because it was a, a to and from work vehicle. But the driver's seat still looks good. And one thing she was happy about when we bought this was the fact that it has the heated seats and that's one of her uh, main requirements with the vehicle is heated seats and also the sunroof with which this one came with the power sunroof. So if we look at the interior overall, lots of use of plastic. Um, Kind of typical, I guess. Um, it does have a leather wrap steering wheel. It does have the uh, the air conditioning. It's manual climate control, but it's still air conditioning and heat nonetheless. And uh, the heat and air conditioning output is excellent on it. Um, it came with um, kind of the upgraded satellite radio with the auxiliary jack and Bluetooth and that type of thing. In 2010, I don't think you could get the uh, the GPS or the yeah the GPS side of it. It does have Bluetooth, but it also has the controls on the steering wheel for volume and and um, station selection and that type of thing. And it has the single uh, CD player in it. Storage overall is a little bit lacking too. There are pockets in the door. Um, you have a glove box and this area here, and you know you've got the bottle holders there. If I look in here, it's kind of a small cubby. It's kind of hard to see within the light in here, but um, you know, they could have provided a bit more storage, I think, overall. And uh, you can see all the, the plastic everywhere. So that you can also, one of the nice features is the, uh, the 120 volt power there. And this is where you uh, select four wheel drive. So it's not uh, an all-wheel drive, like I said, you actually have to put it into four-wheel drive and that engages the, uh, the transfer case and, uh, you know, gets power to the rear wheels when you need it. And not a lot of issue with uh, the four-wheel drive, it, I mean, <laughs> this vehicle's never really gone off-road, but whenever it's been in deep snow and stuff, it seems to plow right through, so that's... Uh, a positive thing. I think it's light enough too that it kind of uh, rides on top of the snow and if you can get a couple wheels spinning that's great and you can see it as the traction control and uh, stability control and it's got the center console for the shifter. So there's a good view of the uh, instrument cluster there except for the reflection of me in it. So you can see it shows your fuel consumption and you know calculates your empty time tire pressures all around um, your lapse time things like the lapse time i don't think i've ever used since i've owned this thing i'm not sure what its purpose is and then you can change some of the settings on how the lights work as far as uh, uh, lights on on departure and, and things like that that you know it does have a few um, gadgety things that make the car enjoyable to own 
It has uh, power windows and power mirrors. It's got heated mirrors as well. So really a uh, fairly nice optioned uh, Jeep. From the back seat, really not much to, to say other than uh, the materials of the seats have held up well. And there's plenty of floor or leg space in here. So I'm about uh, five foot nine, so I'm quite comfortable in back here. Again, the seats are a quality that you wouldn't want to be uh, riding for miles and miles um, or hours at end. But, uh, you know, it's uh, been uh, comfortable for short drives for sure. Again, you can see all the, the plastic everywhere that they've used. But, I mean, it's really, it was next to the Compass, it was an entry-level vehicle, so... Uh, um, the fact that it has as many options as it does is probably uh, a positive thing. And you'll find that there is quite a bit of storage space back here. I got my stuff from work that I take with me in my shopping bags, so ignore that. But um, it's got the uh, leather cover for your storage area. You can fold those seats down and make a long um, storage area for long items. Um, so it's good if you're, if it's just you and one other person and you go to Ikea and find something you like, you should have room in here to uh, take it back or take it home rather. One other feature this thing came with was in the hatch was this drop down speaker thing for all the tailgate parties we go to, which was none. I guess it's a neat feature if you're in California and you want to blast your tunes on the beach or something like that, you've got that option. And it had the, has the premium sound in it, even with the, uh, the, I guess it's basically a bass box there. And overall the sound quality is pretty good. Okay, well let's have a look under the hood at the, the huge powerhouse of the 2.4 liter inline four cylinder. Okay, I got the hood propped up. Here is that rockin' 2.4 liter 170 horse uh, engine. It's a 16 valve engine. To date, it hasn't used any oil between oil changes in its 170,000 kilometers or 106,000 miles. I've uh, just done basic maintenance, pretty much. We did have to have uh, the thermostat housing replaced at one point. You know, normal things like tires and brakes. And we also had to have the rear stabilizer links replaced as well, which is a common failure point. As far as warranty work, we didn't have much done um, when it was new. The outside temperature sensor had to be replaced and the passenger side mirror uh, quit um, heating. So we had to get the glass replaced in that and that was all done under warranty. All the options still work as the as when we bought it, air conditioning's been good. Um, overall, uh, from a reliability perspective, we have not seen hardly any issues. Now, it is getting at an age though, at 11 years old, that it's going to need things coming up. Um, like I think the front brakes are probably due to be done again. That'll be the second or third time that I've, I've done the brakes on the front. And um, probably struts on all four corners, they've never been changed. The ride is getting a little um, firm, if you will, even with the Michelin tires on it that I put on. And that's another thing, the tires are due to be replaced. They've probably got, you know, 70, 80,000 kilometers um, or 50,000 miles on them. So um, doing well in that regard, there, was, there has never been any unusual tire wear or anything like that. So overall, um, the reliability on this vehicle has been excellent as far as I'm concerned. So no, I wouldn't buy another one, but if you were looking for a used one and that had moderate use, even with the mileage that we have at 100,000 or 105,000 miles, 170,000 kilometers, um, I think you would do all right. But again, it all depends on how a vehicle's maintained. If, it's, if a vehicle's been looked after and the servicing has been done appropriately on it, um, you're bound to get a good vehicle out of it. And the way cars last much longer, especially in the drivetrain, um, I don't think you would go wrong buying a used Patriot. And there's a lot of them out there on the road, that's for sure. So even if uh, you had 
damage to one, you could probably find parts at the junkyard pretty easy. And at your local auto parts store as well, you're not going to have an issue finding parts for it either. Why don't we take it out on the road for a little jaunt. You can see how it giddy up and goes and the noise levels on the interior, which to me are kind of high. Okay, let's just take it out onto the freeway or highway for a little bit and uh, maybe you'll be able to register how much noise um, through the microphone. I'm not sure if it's going to pick it up as well as what uh, I can hear within the vehicle. I mean overall the ride is, is firm and bumpy and, and compared to uh, you know Japanese versions of SUVs of the time they're a lot softer of a ride. This one is you know very utilitarian it's uh, I guess maybe they were going for the Jeep like ride I'm not sure but it is not um, what you would call a, a you know a, a highway cruiser for sure so we're gonna uh, kick in some of the, uh, the horses here that's about 3,000 rpm and it took me from 50 kilometers an hour to 100 quite easily uh, there's certainly enough power to uh, keep the vehicle uh, pushing forward for sure it's a fairly calm day today so not hearing as much wind noise but um, in the back hatch there's been since new there has been some kind of uh, wind noise back there that I've never been able to determine the location of so I'm not sure if it was a, a fitment issue from the factory um, or what but just never been able to uh, get rid of that uh, it's kind of a waffling sound and uh, but no real wind whistles or such it's more just uh, a noise that has been annoying another thing um, about this and I've had it in other Chrysler products I've owned especially a Chrysler minivan but every strut tower seems to squeak or squawk in some form or fashion there uh, mostly at uh, you know when you're leaving the driveway um, or going over some bumps you'll hear a, a squeaky sound coming out of the suspension and I'm not sure if you would classify that as a feature or a problem but um, in more Chrysler vehicles than not that I've seen um, even since back into the 80s when I owned a, a Plymouth um, still had that uh, noise coming from the struts so here we are we're going to accelerate again on to um, the highway here 3500 rpm and not sure what noise level you're hearing but um, it's certainly loud in here as far as I'm concerned I'm not sure if it's the shape of the vehicle or what but it's mostly wind noise not so much uh, from the drivetrain but there's certainly drivetrain noise there too from a stability perspective it's really good it's uh, uh, relatively long a vehicle it's not um, like a, a small SUV size it certainly has a bit of length to it and it has a low center of gravity too so you don't get a lot of uh, uh, top side tippiness if you will like I think if you slid into the ditch on this thing you'd be less likely to uh, end up on your roof when compared to um, similar vehicles of, of this size like the Subarus or Toyotas um, sometimes that's driver error too but um, Whenever I see these vehicles in the ditch or those smaller SUVs in the ditch, they're usually on their roof. I don't think the Jeep Patriot would have that kind of problem just because it's a little bit longer and a little bit lower. Uh, my wife is only five foot tall and she had no problem getting in and out of this um, quite comfortably. No chirping the tires with this thing, that's for sure. The amount of horses under the hood, the pickup is good uh, for merging on to, uh, to highway speeds. Um, you're not going to win any races, obviously, with it, but uh, that's where it gets relatively good gas mileage. Like I said, about 10 liters per 100 kilometers or about 23 miles to the gallon. So for a vehicle of, of this size, I think that's uh, an appropriate uh, consumption amount. With the 2.4 liter, it's a 16 valve engine. Um, so uh, fairly lightweight, but also uh, robust in its uh, reliability. But everything still works in it. Even the uh, sunroof opens up nice and smooth. 
I did have to do a video on uh, how to do some maintenance on the sunroof and cleaning out the drains. You can check that one out if uh, you already have a Patriot and you're wondering why your, uh, your uh, sunroof is leaking. Um, all the options work, the cruise works, the front rear wipers, lights, everything is just as it came out of the factory. So it's, uh, um, that's for a base level vehicle, it seems to be uh, well put together and, and has, stood the uh, has stood the test of time so far. That's my review of a long-term ownership of a 2010 Jeep Patriot. Overall, this Jeep has been extremely reliable for the type of daily driving, which is mostly to and from work. The body and paint have held up well, but keep in mind that uh, it's been garage kept for about nine years, and the last couple of years is the only time it's been outside all the time, so that probably helped in preserving the finish and keeping some of the shine on it. The drivetrain has been solid with very little unplanned repairs. I've done basic oil changes and replaced the usual wear items like brakes, tires, etc. And the odd repairs such as the thermostat housing and the rear stabilizer links and those were just completed as necessary. While the 2.4 liter engine isn't the most powerful for the size and weight of the Patriot, it will certainly accelerate and maintain speed in most driving conditions. I wouldn't plan on towing anything with it though. I wouldn't consider this an off-road vehicle by any stretch, but the 4x4 is certainly a nice option for snowy or muddy conditions, but for daily driving I wouldn't consider it a must-have. This Jeep being a well-equipped North Edition, it does offer quite a few nice options like the sunroof, heated seats, 4x4, block heater and all the power options you'd want, as well as cruise control and air conditioning. The interior finishes are quite a bit full of plastic lack some storage space however it is roomy and the fit and finish in 11 years has not degraded there's no new rattles and the surfaces haven't faded at all and it still looks like it did when we drove it off the dealership floor again I wouldn't purchase another one because why would I I've already owned a Patriot but if you're looking for a reliable used vehicle and can find one with similar or less mileage and has been well maintained I don't think you would regret the purchase well, that's it for this edition of Mundane Man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and all that stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.